Vi har været på en, en fantastisk rejse sammen med Paul og Bæk i de her dage, og jeg glæder mig til, at vi i dag skal fortsætte den. En rejse ind i åndens virkefelt, og øh, vi fortsætter i dag. Så øh, lad os invitere Paul og Nikolaj op på scenen og give dem en, en varm velkomst. Welcome. It's so good to have you here with us. Thank you for your ministry to us. And we're looking forward to see what, what God has to give us through you. Let's uh, pray for you. Okay. Heavenly Father, thank you for the blessing that you have uh, given us through Paul and Becky's ministry. And we just ask you to, to, um, to bless him, to anoint him with your spirit, to speak your word with courage, to call us into the Spirit's realm, to, to call us to step up into your plan, and into your light, and into your power. So we just ask for, for your word to be clear this morning and for us to hear it with our ears and our hearts. Amen. Amen. Mig igen. Hallo igen. Hvordan var din morgenmad? How was your breakfast? Okay. Great. Wasn't yesterday a great day? Var det ikke en skøn dag i går? Um, it was so important yesterday to, to have Becky and to have Kathy. Det var så vigtigt i går, at vi havde Becky og Kathy. To remind us that um, when, when teachers are teaching, til at minde os om, at når der står nogen og underviser, it's not because everything in their life is perfect. Så er det ikke fordi, de har styr på alt i deres liv. And when we're declaring about all the things that God can do, og når vi um, proklamerer alle de ting, som Gud kan gøre, it doesn't mean that any of us are living in a life of constant miracles and glory. Så betyder det ikke, at der er nogen af os, der lever i et liv, der kun består af mirakler og herlighed. And um, Becky and I felt very nervous when we wrote a book together. Uh, Becky og jeg uh, var ret nervøse, da vi skrev en bog sammen. Partly because that thing can be very tense within a marriage. Dels fordi det godt kan skabe nogle spændinger i et ægteskab. But more because we felt that God wanted us to tell something of our own story. Men mere fordi vi følte, at Gud gerne ville have os til at fortælle noget af vores egen historie. And what we were worried about was that people would think that we think we're special. Og noget af det, vi var bekymret over, var, at folk ville tro, at vi tror, vi er noget særligt. Whereas actually, the point of writing the story is that we know that we're ordinary. Hvor, hvor pointen med at, at fortælle vores historie netop var, at, at vi ved, at vi er helt almindelige. And because we know that we're ordinary, we know that what God has done for us, he can do for anyone. Og fordi vi ved, at vi er helt almindelige, så ved vi også, at det, som Gud har gjort for os, det kan han gøre for hvem som helst. So our, our verses for today are here. Uh, de vers, vi skal læse i dag, de står her. Just to remind us again that we are on an adventure with Jesus. Bare for at minde os om igen, at vi er på eventyr med Jesus. The Christian life is meant to be really exciting. Det er meningen, at det kristne liv skal være spændende. Full of excitement. Uh, fyldt med spænding. Full of new possibilities. Fyldt med nye muligheder. It's an adventure. Det er et eventyr. And Jesus called his disciples and he involved his disciples in what he did. Jesus kaldte sine disciple og så involverede han dem i det han gjorde. So it says here in Mark 3 that he called them to be with him. Står i Markus kapitel 3 vers vers 14 at han kaldte dem for at de skulle være sammen med ham. And this is the relationship of intimacy. Det er den intime relation. But he always intended that they would also be sent. Men det var hele tiden hans mening at de også skulle sendes ud. And this is the adventure of going in authority and power. Det er det eventyret af at gå med magt og myndighed. And honestly, lots of us are much more comfortable with the intimacy. For at være helt ærlig, så er der, så er der nok mange af os, der, der har det meget mere bekvemt med intimiteten. But there are things about God that we will only discover as we step out and join him in his work. Men der er ting ved Gud, som vi ikke opdager, før vi træder ud og involverer os i hans arbejde. Like Peter walking on the water. Som Peter, der gik på vandet. He didn't do it perfectly. Han gjorde det ikke perfekt. 
But there were things about being with Jesus that he could only understand if he stepped out. Men der var noget af det at være sammen med Jesus som han kun kunne forstå hvis han trådte ud af båden. So in um, Matthew chapter 10, i Matteus evangeliet kapitel 10, Jesus calls the disciples to him. Der kalder Jesus disciplene til sig. And he sends them out to do exactly the things that he has been doing. Og så sender han dem ud for at de skal gøre lige præcis de ting som han har gjort. He says to them heal the sick and raise the dead. Han siger til dem helbred de syge, opvæk de døde, cleanse the lepers, gør spedalske rene, and drive out demons. Uddriv dæmoner. And that means that ordinary people like me and you can do the same things that Jesus did. Og det betyder at helt almindelige mennesker som du og jeg kan gøre det samme som Jesus gjorde. Because he has given us the same spirit, for han har givet os den samme ånd, and he sent us out with the same task. Og han har sendt os ud med den samme opgave. And um, Jesus went on to say in John's gospel, og Jesus fortsatte med at sige Johannes evangeliet, in John 14:12, Johannes evangeliet kapitel 14 vers 12, he says, I tell you the truth, whoever believes in me will do the things that I have been doing. Og siger han sandelig, sandelig siger jeg, ja, den der tror på mig, han skal også gøre de gerninger jeg gør. Now right the way through John's gospel the Greek word that he uses there is, is used. Um, det, uh, det, det ord som han bruger på græsk her det bliver brugt mange gange i Johannes evangeliet. Lots of famous verses that you and I know. I mange vers som vi kender rigtig godt. So God loved the world so much. Så ledes elskede Gud verden. That whoever believes at en vær som tror would not die but would have eternal life. Ikke skal fortabes, men have evigt liv. Now when he says whoever believes, I think he means all of us. Når han siger en vær som tror, så tror jeg han mener os alle sammen. So if you believe in Jesus, you will have eternal life. Så hvis du tror på Jesus, så har du evigt liv. When Jesus was talking to Mary and Martha, da Jesus talte med Martha og Maria, I said he says I tell you the truth, whoever believes in me will never die. Der sagde han Sandelig siger jeg, at den, der tror på mig, skal aldrig i evighed dø. And we understand that to mean that whoever believes in Jesus, any of us. Og, øhm, og, og, og det forstår vi jo som, at hvem som helst, der tror på Jesus, os alle sammen. That we will never truly die and be finished. Vi øhm, kommer aldrig virkelig til at dø. So when Jesus here says, whoever believes in me will do miracles. Så når Jesus her siger, at den, der tror på mig, skal gøre mirakler. I think he means whoever. Så tror jeg også, han mener, hvem som helst. Anyone. In vær, all of us, os alle sammen. That if we believe in Him, this is possible for us. Hvis vi tror på ham, så er det muligt for os. But we have to grow into it. Men vi er nødt til at vokse ind i det. And the problem often is us. Problemet er tit os. It's not God. Det er ikke Gud. It's us. Det er os selv. Either we don't know this or we don't believe it. Enten så ved vi det ikke eller også tror vi ikke på det. Often we read it, but we struggle to believe it. Tit så læser vi det, men vi har svært ved at tro på det. And what Becky and Kathy were talking about yesterday is, is about how our circumstances make it hard for us to believe what God says. Det som Becky og Kathy talte om i går, det er hvordan vores omstændigheder kan gøre det vanskeligt for os at tro. How if your heart has been broken, hvis dit hjerte er blevet knust, then it's hard to believe and trust that God is good. Så er det svært virkelig at tro på og have tillid til at Gud er god. How if life has damaged you and you've not felt safe, hvis du kommer til skade i livet og du ikke har følt dig tryg, it's hard to step out and take risks. Så er det svært at træde ud og løbe risici. Now that really is not my testimony. Det er ikke mit vidnesbyrd. Um, I've found in life that there are some people who are more emotional. Jeg har fundet ud af at der er nogle mennesker som er mere emotionelle. Uh, who are more experiential. Som um, uh, som som lever så mere ind i deres oplevelser. And we say these are people whose hearts rule their head. Og uh, om de mennesker siger vi at uh, deres hjerte uh, regerer over deres hoved. And there are other people who we're, we're not so emotional. Og så er vi nogle andre som som ikke er lige så emotionelle. We're more logical. Vi er mere logiske. More practical. Mere praktiske. I'm one of them. Og jeg er, og jeg hører til den kategori. Remember I was a mathematician as a student. Husk at uh, at jeg er matematisk student. So Becky and I will be watching a film. Um, Becky og jeg vi sad og så en film. And I'll turn just to look at her. Og jeg um, vendte mig om og kiggede på hende. And I'll suddenly realize that she's crying. Og så kunne jeg se at hun sidder og græder. And then I'm as a husband I'm very worried. Og, og så som ægte mand bliver jeg jo bekymret. And I, why are you crying? Hvorfor græder du? And she'll say it's sad. Og siger jamen det er jo en sørgelig film. And I'll think about the film and I'll say. Og så tænker jeg over filmen og så siger jeg. You're right it is sad. Um, um, det er du egentlig ret i. Det er en sørgelig film. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Our whole marriage has been like this. Sådan har hele vores ægteskab været. 
Because I am somebody whose head rules his heart. Fordi øh, jeg er en person hvor øh, hvor hovedet regerer over hjertet. And sometimes I look at people in church and I think I wish I could be more emotional. Nogle gange så ser jeg på på, på, på andre mennesker i kirken og tænker jeg jeg vil ønske at jeg kunne være mere emotionel. I, I wish I could have more experience. Jeg vil ønske at at at, at jeg kunne øh, have nogle flere erfaringer med Gud. Because some people seem to have experiences of God all the time. Der er nogle mennesker der ser ud til at erfare Gud hele tiden. And I feel like I'm watching. Og jeg føler det som om jeg bare kigger på. No, I believe that if you have a strong mind, it's a gift. Jeg tror på at hvis du har um, en, en, en stærk forstand, så er det en gave. It helps me as a teacher. Det hjælper mig som lærer. It helps me to strategize. Det hjælper mig med at lægge strategi. As a leader, it helps me to plan. Som leder så hjælper det mig med at lægge planer. But so often we rely upon our gifts. Men uh, men alt for tit så gør vi os afhængige af den gave. And we only approach God through them. Og uh, vi uh, nærmer os kun Gud igennem vores forstand. And in very subtle ways we limit God. Og på den måde begrænser vi Gud på uh, uh, we limit. Ja, yeah, vi begrænser Gud. Put God in a box. Vi p- lægger Gud i en kasse. How's he doing? Now, subtil måde hedder det vist. Now, Becky and I are quite extreme. Becky og jeg er ret ekstreme. We are right at the opposite ends of the spectrum. Vi ligger i hver sin ende af spektret. But the truth is, all of us have a little bit of our head that needs to be healed. Men sandheden er, at vi har alle sammen noget i vores hoved, der trænger til at blive helbredt. I don't know what you said, so don't look at me. I just said the same thing you said. <laughs> and all of us have a little bit of our heart that needs to be healed. Og vi har alle sammen noget i vores hjerte, der trænger til at blive helbredt. <laughs> so I'm going to tell you a little bit of my story. Så nu vil jeg fortælle jer lidt af min historie. And, and you might possibly find it easier to relate to me than you did to Becky. Og det kan være, at du føler, det finder det lettere at relatere til mig end til Becky. Maybe you have not experienced much brokenness in your life. Måske har du ikke oplevet en, en hel masse brudhed i dit liv. Yeah, my life was fairly straightforward. Mit liv det er kørt sådan rimelig ud af landevejen. Maybe you look around in a service of worship and you think I'm not as emotional as they are. Det kan være du sidder og kigger dig omkring uh, til en uh, under lovsangen og tænker jeg er ikke lige så uh, emotionel som den person. And that was me. Og sådan var jeg. And I told you how when the spirit of God filled me as a student. Og jeg fortalte jer om hvordan uh, da da Helion uh, fyldte mig mens jeg studerede. Uh, God began to heal the the, the the pipe between my head and my heart. Så begyndte Gud at, at helbrede ledningen mellem mit hoved og mit hjerte. And the things that I believed in my head began to come into my heart. Og de ting som jeg troede med mit hoved begyndte at komme ned i mit hjerte. And I began to experience something of them. Og jeg begyndte at erfare noget af det. Now I became passionate about the word of God. Jeg blev passioneret omkring Guds ord. And I, I read the whole Bible cover to cover in three months. Jeg læste hele Bibelen fra ende til anden på tre, på tre måneder. Uh, and in those days I used to do Bible memory verses. Og um, den gang der lærte jeg mange Bibelvers udenad. And one of the first verses I memorized was this from Proverbs 3. Og et af de første vers jeg lærte udenad, det var fra Ordsprogenes bog kapitel 3 vers 5 til 6. Trust in the Lord with all of your heart and do not lean on your own understanding in all your ways acknowledge him and he will guide and direct your paths. Ja, jeg er ikke lærte Stol på Herren af hele dit hjerte og støt dig ikke til din egen indsigt. Ha ham i tankerne på alle dine veje, så vil han jævne dine stier. And so what I realized was actually my whole life has been the opposite. Og så gik det op for mig at hele mit liv faktisk havde været lige modsat. Because for my whole life I have lent upon my understanding. For hele mit liv har jeg netop støttet mig til min indsigt. It was really important to me that I would understand things. Det var meget vigtigt for mig at forstå ting. That I would be able to get my head around them. At um, at jeg kunne få det hele ind i hovedet. And if anything was beyond my understanding. Og hvis der var noget der gik ud over min forstand. Then I tended to hold myself back from it. Så so, um, uh, så so tog jeg lidt afstand fra det. But let me tell you a secret. Men uh, men uh, ikke noget personligt kendskab. Til And I wanted God not just understanding. Men uh, jeg vil have Gud ikke bare en uh, en logisk forståelse. So what happened to me was I, I went to theological college. Så so det der skete det var så jeg begyndte at læse teologi. I'd been doing this outreach ministry to overseas students. Og um, jeg uh, rakte ud til 
studerende fra udlandet. And uh, it had led me into a conviction that I was meant to, to preach and be a leader. Og det ledte mig til en overbevisning om, at det var meningen, at jeg skulle prædike, og jeg skulle være leder i kirken. So I went to theological college. Så jeg læste teologi. And for the first time, I met people who were charismatics. Og for første gang mødte jeg mennesker, som var karismatikere. And one day, I was, I was talking to one of these charismatics. Og en dag, så stod jeg og talte med en af de her karismatikere. And he'd realized from some of the things I was saying, that I had also experienced the Spirit of God in my life. Og ud fra noget af det, som, som jeg sagde, så... Um, så, så øh, var det gået op for ham, at jeg også havde erfaret Guds ånd i mit liv. But he also realized I knew nothing. Men det gik også op for ham, at jeg ikke vidste noget. It was actually the same man that prayed for Becky. Det var faktisk den samme mand, som bad for Becky. And so he asked me a bit about my story. Så han spurgte mig om min historie. And I told him about this experience of being filled with the Spirit when I was lying down. Og jeg fortalte ham om den her oplevelse, jeg havde af at blive fyldt med ånden, mens jeg lå ned. And he said to me, uh, do you speak in tongues? Og så sagde han, taler du i tunger? And I said, well, you know, maybe on the third or fourth night of this experience, I prayed for the gift. I said, yeah, maybe on the third or fourth afternoon, when I had this experience, I prayed for the gift. And I said, and I opened my mouth and I made some sounds. And so I opened my mouth and there came some sounds. But I realized that was just me, so I stopped. But it went off for me that it was just something that came from myself, so that's why I held it up. And he said to me, of course it was just you. Of course it was just you. But it wasn't just you. Men det var ikke kun dig selv. Said, have you not read in the Bible? Har du ikke læst i Bibelen? They spoke in tongues. De talte i tunger. As the Holy Spirit enabled them. Som efter som hvad Helligånden gav dem at sige. And he said to me, it's always like this with God. Men sagde, sådan er det altid med Gud. It's always a partnership. Det er altid et partnerskab. He doesn't take you over and possess you. Det er ikke sådan at han tager dig i, i, i besiddelse. So you have no control. Sådan, så du ikke selv har nogen kontrol over hvad du gør. What he does is he wants you to offer your bit. Han vil gerne have, at du skal uh, komme med, med din del. And then he will take it and make it something special. Og så tager han det og gør det til noget særligt. So if you're going to pray for the sick to be healed. Altså, du, du er nødt til at bede for de syge, for at de bliver helbredt. He will do it, but he'll use your prayers. Det er ham, der gør det, men han bruger din bøn. If you want to give a prophetic word. Hvis du gerne vil give et profetisk ord. You have to communicate it. Så er du nødt til at kommunikere det. He will inspire it, but you have to deliver it. Han inspirerer it. det, men du skal videregive det. So there's always a partnership. Det er altid et partnerskab. Now this was a new thought to me. Det var, det var en helt ny tanke for mig. So he said, let's go and practice. Uh, så so han sagde, jamen lad os, uh, lad os gå ud og praktisere so det. Come up to my room. Uh, kom hen på mit værelse. And what we'll do is we'll praise God in English. Og uh, så vil vi tilbe Gud på engelsk. Because tongues is about praise. Fordi det er det, uh, tungetale handler om. Det handler om tilbedelse. And then he says, and I'll speak, I'll speak in tongues and you join in. Og så begynder jeg at tale i tunge, sagde han, og så, um, og så kan du bare um, slutte dig til. Now, I, I wasn't sure I could join in. Ja, det var jeg ikke helt sikker på, at jeg kunne. So, but I thought, I want to give it a go. Jeg tænkte, okay, jeg prøver. So we praised God in English. Så so vi tilbad Gud på engelsk. And then he started to praise God in this language I didn't recognize. Og så begyndte han at tilbe Gud på et sprog, jeg ikke genkendte. And he said, now go on, join in, join sagde, in. Kom nu, um, vær med. So now I opened my mouth and I started making a few sounds. Jeg åbnede min mund og begyndte at komme med nogle få lyde. And he said, don't worry about it, language always starts simply. Og han sagde, det skal du ikke bekymre dig om. Når man, når man lærer et sprog, så begynder det altid simpelt. He said, babies don't come out with sentences. Spædbørn, de taler ikke hele sætninger. I, I was slightly offended by the comparison. <laughs> Jeg var en smule um, krænket over uh, sammenligningen. But he says, you just have to trust God and just get, let it go. Han sagde, du er nødt til bare at stole på Gud og give slip. So as far as I could, I stopped thinking about it, and I just started letting it go. So, so God, you couldn't hold up with me think over there, get bar slip. And after a while, he said, "Yep, that's it." After six years, I said, "Yeah, so nearly." So just practice five minutes a day. Did it? You skal bare øve dig fem minutter om dagen. Probably in the shower, so nobody thinks you're strange. Um, i brusebadet for eksempel, så der ikke er nogen der tror du er mærkelig. And then he said, and um, by the way, I'm going to speak in a college tomorrow. Come and be my ministry team. Og for resten sagde han, så skal jeg um, tale på et college i morgen, så um, vil du ikke komme og være med på mit forbundsteam? So I was really not convinced about this tongues thing, but I said okay. Jeg var overhovedet ikke sikker på det her med, uh, med, med tungetal, men jeg sagde okay. So the next night we went to a college in the university. Så næste aften tog vi hen på et, et kollegium på universitetet. Uh, there were about 50 students there. Der var omkring uh, 50 studerende. And he spoke about the Holy Spirit. Han talte om Helligånden. It wasn't very good. Uh, det var ikke særlig godt. And uh, at the end, he said, "Now we're going to pray for people." Oh, it's a. Beslutningen til sagde nu skal vi bede for folk. 
And he said, what we're going to do is we're going to have some worship music and Paul and I are going to come round and pray for you. Og så sagde han, det, det, det der skal ske, det er, hvis vi um, skal have noget lovsang, og imens så vil Paul og jeg komme rundt og bede for jer. So this is, this is a long time ago. Det er længe siden. So he took a cassette tape. Så han tog et kassettebånd. And he put it in the ghetto blaster. Og satte det i ghetto blasteren. It was now what I call worship one. Det var a long time ago. <laughs> det var det, jeg kaldte... Uh, Uh, so, so he siden. played worship music. It was quite loud. So um, and spilled the low song music. He he spilled it. He said to everybody, "Now stand up." And to 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 all that were there, rise. Close your eyes. Look on. So you're not distracted by Paul's ugliness. So you get distracted by what Paul is. Open out your hands like you're going to receive a gift. I can't even frame some of his comments and gave. And then he said, "Come, Holy Spirit." So say, "Come, Holy Spirit." And then Paul and I, we're going to come round and bless what God is doing. Og så vil Paul og jeg komme rundt og velsigne det som Gud gør. And he said to me, just go wherever you see the Spirit on moving. Og han havde sagt til mig, bare bare gå hen hvor du kan se at uh, ånden virker. Now I, I had no idea what that meant. Jeg havde ingen anelse om hvad det betød. It's like because the Holy Spirit is invisible. For Helligånden er usynlig. So but very quickly he started praying for someone. Men han begyndte meget hurtigt at bede for And en. then uh, so he was praying for somebody else. Og så bad han også for en anden. And then he was like praying for a third person. Og så bad for en tredje person. <laughs> And uh, and I'm like looking at it, thinking I don't know. Where's the Holy Spirit? What are you on him? And and after a while, he starts doing this. And I, I realized he wants me to go and pray for this girl over here. And so I look at her and I think, well, she does look like she's reacting slightly differently. So I go over there and I start to pray for her. So I go ahead and begin to pray for him. And he said, "Well, when you pray for someone, just pray whatever God gives you." And he said, "When you pray for someone, just pray whatever God gives you." And he said, "When you pray for someone, just pray whatever God gives you." And he said, "When you pray for someone, just pray whatever God gives you." And he said, "When you pray for someone, just pray whatever God gives you." And he said, "When you pray for someone, just pray whatever God gives you." And he said, "When you pray for someone, just pray så skal du bruge den her tungetalegave, som du ikke tror på. So after 10 seconds, I thought I'm in trouble. Så efter 10 sekunder tænker jeg, okay, nu har jeg problemer. I'm gonna have to use this gift of tongues that I don't believe in. Nu er jeg nødt til at bruge den her tungetalegave, som jeg ikke tror på. And I was so self-conscious. Og jeg var virkelig for lejen. I, I was embarrassed. Jeg var, øh, jeg var flov. I'm, I'm gonna feel really silly. Nu, kom, nu kommer jeg til at føle mig virkelig dum. People are going to hear my baby language. Folk kommer til at høre mit babysprog. And they're going to think that I'm having a seizure. Og de vil og de vil tro at uh, at um, jeg har fået et et krampeanfald eller noget. So so I put my I had my hand on the girl's shoulder. Så jeg lagde min hånd på pigens skulder. And I the first ever prayer I prayed with the gift of tongues. Og den første bøn nogensinde som jeg bad i tunge. Was addressed to my right armpit like this. <laughs> den um, henvendte jeg til min højre armhule sådan her. And, and it was really loud in the room. There is no way she could have heard me. Oh, uh, there was there was a lot of alarm in the room, so she could not hear me. I couldn't even hear myself. I couldn't even hear myself. But, men, the moment I started to use that gift of tongues that I did not believe in, the moment I began to use that tongue talking gave that I did not believe in, she fell to the floor. So she fell to the floor, and then she flopped like a fish. And so. Um, <laughs> Uh, gav hun sig til at, at bevæge sig som en fisk. And uh, I... <laughs> Across the room, my friend caught my eye. Og um, hen i den anden ende af, af, af lokalet, så fangede min ven mit blik. He, he just did this. <laughs> Og han gjorde sådan der. <laughs> And I, I, so I, I just followed her down, you know. Yeah, yeah, you're full of me now. Pretended I knew what I was doing. This happens regularly. No, no, as if I had just been doing it. Or yeah, this happens all the time. Anyway, about after about ten minutes, after about ten minutes, about ten minutes, she sat up. So sat on the up, and she said, "Oh, that was amazing." And she said, "Oh, that was fantastic." And I'm like, "Oh, I'm so relieved." Oh, and she said, "Oh, that was amazing." And what she said was, "What she said was." What happened was in that time of ministry. Det der skete var, at mens der blev bedt for mig. She had had a memory. Mens der blev bedt for hende, der havde um, der havde hun fået et minde. A memory had come up of how her father had taught her to swim. Om hvordan hendes far havde lært hende at svømme. And her father had taught her to swim by taking her to the deep end of the pool. Og hendes far havde lært hende at svømme ved med at være tage hende ind til den dybe ende af svømmebassinet. And he would throw her in. Og og kaste hende. 
And then just when she was like not managing to swim, he would fish her out. Og så mens hun lå der og ikke kunne svømme, så fiskede han hende op. And he would say to her, catch your breath and we'll do it again. Og så sagde han til, til hende, når du har fået vejret, så gør vi det igen. So you can imagine she had a terrible relationship with her earthly father. Så so, som I kan forestille jer, så havde hun et frygteligt forhold til sin jordiske far. She found it really difficult to trust him. Hun havde meget svært ved at stole på ham. And she had become a Christian six months earlier. Hun var blevet kristen et halvt år tidligere. And guess what she was having trouble doing with her heavenly father. Og prøv en gang at gætte, hvad hun havde svært ved i forhold til sin himmelske far. She found it really hard to trust her heavenly father. Hun fandt det meget svært at stole på sin himmelske far. And in that encounter with Jesus, og i det møde med Jesus, I think he took her back to the drowning moment. Jeg tror, han tog hende tilbage til det øjeblik, hvor hun følte, hun var ved at drukne. But she says this time in the picture, I saw that Jesus was there and he was holding me up. Hun sagde, denne gang, der, der så jeg i billedet, at Jesus var der, og han løftede mig op. And he was saying, the Father God is not like this. Og så sagde han, Gud Fader er ikke sådan. He will never let you down. Han vil aldrig svigte dig. He will always save you. Han vil altid redde dig. And um, she ran off to make a phone call to her father. Og uh, hun løb ud for at ringe til sin far. It's the first time in years that she had initiated the contact. Det var første gang i flere år, at hun havde taget initiativ til at kontakte ham. And I saw her about a year later. Jeg mødte hende et års tid senere. And she had a really good relationship with her father. Der havde hun et rigtig godt forhold til sin far. And a fantastic relationship with her heavenly father. Og et fantastisk forhold til sin himmelske far. Now, who was that experience for? Hvem var uh, den oplevelse for? Well, obviously it was for her. Yeah, den var tydeligvis for hende. But it was also for me. Men det var også for mig. Because God said to me, who's somebody in my head all the time. Sorry. God said to me. Gud sagde til mig. And I'm somebody who's always in my head. Og jeg er en som altid uh, ophold, opholder mig i mit hoved. There are things I'm going to ask you to do that you will not understand, but I will use them. Der er nogle ting, som jeg kommer til at bede dig om at gøre, som du ikke vil kunne forstå, men som jeg vil bruge. We'll look later, but when Paul says to the Corinthians about tongues, vi kan se på det senere, når Paulus skriver til Korintherne om tungetal. He says, if I pray in a tongue, my mind is unfruitful. Så skriver han, hvis jeg beder i tunger, så er min forstand uden frugt. I don't understand what I'm saying. Jeg forstår ikke, hvad jeg siger. So that helped me begin to step into some of the supernatural things. Så det hjalp mig til at begynde at træde ud i noget af det overnaturlige. And trust God for things that I couldn't understand. Og have tillid til Gud i de ting, jeg ikke kunne forstå. But I still had a lot of problems. Men jeg havde stadig mange problemer. I still do. Det har jeg stadigvæk. But Becky and I went to our first church. Da Becky og jeg kom til vores første kirke. Uh, this was 1992. Det var 1992. I was 12. Jeg var 12 år. Ish. Sådan der omkring i hvert fald. Um, and uh, it was a great church. Og det var en dejlig kirke. Very open to the Holy Spirit. Meget åben for Helligånden. And uh, after two years. Efter to år. I was mature enough as an assistant pastor der var moden nok som uh, hjælpepræst to be left in charge til at um, få ansvaret while 50 people from the church went to the new wine summer conference der 50 mennesker fra menigheden tog med til new wine summer conference and we sent off 50 people vi sendte 50 mennesker af sted and a week later we got back 50 idiots og en uge senere fik vi 50 idioter hjem Because something had happened at the conference. But I was scared it'll end up at the conference. And they had had such a powerful encounter with the Holy Spirit. They had had such a strong meeting with the Holy Spirit. That our meetings were completely changed. That our meetings were completely changed. For months and months. In months, weeks. Hundreds of people started to turn up. They began to come. Hundreds of people. And they would come forward for prayer. And they come from to forbun. And almost everybody we prayed for would fall over. And so it's it all we prayed for fell down. And it was a little church. There was a little church with just one aisle down the middle. There was an enkelt middagang. And at the end of the service, or at the slutningen af gudstjenesten, the vicar and I would go into the vestry. Så gik sognepræsten og jeg ud i sakristiet. And we would climb out of the window. Og klatre ud af vinduet. And run through the graveyard. Og løb hen over kirkegården to shake hands as people left. For at give hånd til folk når de gik. Because the aisle was full of bodies. Fordi uh, middagangen var, var fuld af kroppe. There were people lying everywhere. Folk lå overalt. It was a really powerful move of God. Det var en uh, meget kraftfuld ting Gud gjorde. And in the middle of all this, og midt i alt det, I'm praying for people. It's all happening. Jeg står der og beder for folk, og det, det hele foregår. They're praying for me. Og de beder for mig. Nothing. Der sker ikke noget. I am a brick. Jeg er en mursten. 
And to be honest, I had always had a problem with this whole falling over thing. Men var helt ærlig, så har jeg altid haft det svært med alt det der øh, falde. That is never happening to me. Det sker aldrig for mig. And, and sometimes in in prayer, I had felt the weight of the presence of God. Nogle gange når jeg har bedt, så har jeg følt vægten af Guds nærvær. You know, because in Hebrew, the word for God's glory is kavod. På hebraisk så er ordet for Guds herlighed kavod. And it literally means heaviness, weight. Og det betyder direkte oversat tyngde. So you remember when the temple is dedicated? I kan måske huske at da templet blev indviet. The glory of the Lord comes down. Så kom Herrens herlighed ned. And the priests og præsterne can't stand up. Kunne ikke stå op. Because sometimes there is a heaviness to God's presence. Fordi nogle gange så er der en tyngde over and Guds nærvær. Often in prayer I had felt the weight. Og, og, og tit og ofte når jeg har bedt så har jeg følt den her tyngde. But my problem is when you're praying for me. Men mit problem er når du beder for mig. I'm not thinking about God. Så tænker jeg ikke på Gud. I'm listening to your prayer. Så lytter jeg til din bøn. And the prayer over there. Og bønden derover. And I'm thinking about me. Og så tænker jeg på mig. Because I am an analyst. Fordi jeg er en analytiker. I'm always thinking. Jeg tænker altid. It's really hard for me to focus on God. Det er meget svært for mig at fokusere på Gud. And so I would be feeling the presence of God. Så jeg følte Guds nærvær. And I would be calculating my center of gravity. Og så udregnede jeg mit tyngdecentrum. And my angle of inclination. Og min hældningsvinkel. Mathematician, remember? Who's your mathematiker? And I would be thinking, I'm going to fall over. And, and so I would get to that point because I'm thinking about it. I'd go. And then it would all start happening again. And I'd get to that point and I'd go. I used to sometimes say, I've been from the front of the church to the back, like one step at a time. <laughs> Nogle gange så er jeg bevæget mig fra forrest til kirken til bagerst et skridt ad gangen. And it's because I can't stop thinking. Og det er fordi jeg ikke kan holde op med at tænke. And I can't stop analyzing. Jeg ikke holde op med at analysere. And the problem with that. Og problemet med det. Is that sometimes I stop participating. At nogle gange så holder jeg op med at deltage. And I start spectating. Og begynder at se på. So I, I'm never going to fall over. Så jeg kommer aldrig til at falde. That's what I said to God. Det var det, jeg sagde til Gud. But I'm beginning to become very, very embarrassed about this whole thing. Men uh, jeg begynder at blive meget flov over alt det her. I'm, I'm kind of thinking, I do want that experience. Og jeg tænker, jeg, jeg vil gerne have den oplevelse, den I erfaring. I don't really care about falling over. Altså, jeg, jeg er ligeglad med at falde. But when people get up, they seem to say it was good. Men når folk rejser sig, så siger de, det var godt. And I'm beginning to feel that maybe I'm stopping God from doing something. Og jeg begynder at føle, at, at jeg måske forhindrer Gud i at gøre noget. No, it was never going to happen with other people praying for me. Det ville aldrig komme til at ske, når andre bad for mig. In fact, I waited until Becky went to work one day. Faktisk så ventede jeg en dag til Becky var taget på arbejde. And then I said, right, I've got to sort this out with God. Og så sagde jeg, okay, nu må jeg finde ud af det her sammen med Gud. So I listened to some cassette tapes from the church. Så jeg lyttede til nogle kassettebånd fra kirken. And the preacher was talking about how we need to let go and let God. Og predikanten talte om hvordan vi skal give slip og lade Gud komme til. And he said, you know, sometimes God will offend your mind to reveal your heart. Og han sagde nogle gange um, så vil Gud forarve din forstand for at åbenbare dit hjerte. He said, our problem is so often we want to be in control. Så tit er vores problem at vi gerne vil være i kontrol. But Jesus wants to take over. Men Jesus ønsker at tage over. And I, at this point, I'm feeling very convicted. Og på det her tidspunkt, der er, føler jeg mig meget ramt. So I, I'm saying, right, I have got to sort this out with God. Uh, Så so jeg tænker, okay, jeg er nødt til at finde ud af det her med Gud. And then out of nowhere, I get this word of wisdom. Og så uh, bare ud af ingen, ud af det blå, der får jeg det her visdom. Just pops into my head. Det uh, popper bare ind i mit hoved. And it says, if your problem is falling over, why don't you start on the floor? Og, uh, og det lyder. Hvis, hvis dit problem er med at, um, at falde, hvorfor starter du så ikke bare på gulvet? Why don't you just start down there? Hvorfor begynder du ikke bare dernede? Oh, genius! Oh, det, genialt! So I got a cushion. Så so jeg fandt uh, en pude. Put it on the floor. Lagde den ned på gulvet. Put on some worship music. Sat noget lovsangsmusik på. Lay on the floor. Lagde mig på gulvet. Looked at the ceiling. Så på loftet. And said, God. Og sagde, Gud. Come and get me. Kom og tag mig. And nothing happened. Og der skete ingenting. And I said, I'm not going anywhere. I said, I'm going to. I'm going to stay. Jeg bliver her. Whatever you're doing, I really need it. Uanset hvad hvad det er du gør, så har jeg virkelig brug for det. 
And gradually I began to sense the presence of God again. Og gradvis begyndte jeg at mærke Guds nærvær igen. Not something I'd sensed very often. Det er ikke noget jeg har mærket ret tit. But I, it was like I'd sensed it as a student. Men det var ligesom jeg havde mærket det mens jeg studerede. And gradually that the presence got stronger and stronger. Og gradvis blev nærværet stærkere og stærkere. And I, I felt like um, tingling across my mouth. Og um, jeg følte en prikken omkring min mund. And it was so strong that I couldn't get up off the floor. Det var så stærkt at jeg ikke kunne rejse mig fra gulvet. Except I knew I could. Vorte fra det vidste jeg at jeg godt kunne. I knew I could reassert control. Jeg vidste at jeg godt kunne øhm, øh, tage, tage kontrollen tilbage. Because in the middle of that experience, for midt i den erfaring, the, the telephone rang. Der ringede telefonen. And I knew I could answer it if I wanted to. Og jeg vidste jeg kunne tage den hvis jeg ville. And I made a really good decision. Og jeg traf en rigtig god beslutning. No, I think God's doing something. I'm going to stay here. Jeg tror Gud er ved at gøre noget. Jeg bliver her. Let the answer phone take it. Og lad telefonen svare til den. And um, after about 20 or 30 minutes this experience faded. Og efter sådan 20 30 minutter så fadede den her uh, erfaring ud. I sat up. Jeg satte mig op. And I kind of crawled across to the phone. Jeg kravlede hen til telefonen. And on the phone was a friend of mine. Og det var en af mine venner. A minister in another part of the country. Præst i et andet sted i landet. And he said, have you heard about this weird thing the Holy Spirit is doing in the church? Og han sagde, har du hørt om det her underlige som Helligånden laver i kirken? And I phoned him back. Og jeg ringede tilbage til ham. And I said, if you'd phoned me three hours ago, this is what I would have said. Og jeg sagde, hvis du havde ringet til mig for tre timer siden, så ville jeg have sagt sådan her. But let me tell you what's just happened. Men uh, lad mig fortælle dig, hvad der lige er sket. And, and for me, that was just, just a a moment of surrender to God. Og for mig der var det et øjeblik med overgivelse til Gud. I probably get prayed for more than anybody else in our church. Jeg bliver sikkert bedt for oftere end nogen anden i min kirke. Almost always when I preach, I go get ministry afterwards. Så til altid når når jeg prædiker, så går jeg hen og får forbøn efter. I get people to pray for me before I preach. Jeg får folk til at bede for mig før jeg prædiker. Før jeg leder. Because this is not for those who are needy. Fordi det her det er ikke for dem der har behov. This is for those who are hungry. Det er for dem som uh, er sultne. Uh, and most of the time the I don't have tiden, an experience. Der uh, oplever jeg ikke noget. I've learned to receive by faith. Jeg har lært at tage imod i tro. I don't need the spiritual tingle. Jeg har ikke brug for uh, for den her åndelige prikken. I believe what God has said is true. Jeg tror på at det Gud har sagt er sandt. And so I receive it by faith. Så jeg tager imod det i tro. I'm not a very experiential person. Jeg er ikke en specielt meget erfaringsperson. I'm not a very emotional person. Jeg er heller ikke særlig emotionel. But I've discovered that when we partner with God, men jeg har opdaget at uh, når vi samarbejder med Gud, we have to lay down our understanding. Så er vi nødt til at lægge vores forståelse ned. And we have to lay down our control. Og lægge vores kontrol ned. And let him take over. Og lade ham tage over. And over the next couple of days we're going to be looking at some of the gifts of the spirit. De næste par dage, der skal vi se på nogle af Åndens gaver. Opportunities for us to partner with God muligheder for at uh, vi kan samarbejde med Gud where we have to do something hvor vi skal gøre noget and we might feel embarrassed or awkward about it og måske um, så uh, synes vi det er pinligt eller akavet but if we trust him he will use those things incredibly powerfully men hvis vi stoler på ham så vil han bruge de ting mægtigt so he says in 1 Corinthians 12 Paul says i 1 Korintherbrev kapitel 12 der siger Paulus about gifts of the spirit brothers and sisters i do not want you to be uninformed det får være set om åndens gaver, brødre, vil jeg ikke holde jer i uvidenhed. You know, we need to learn about these things. They're in the scripture for us. Vi er nødt til at lære om de her ting, der står om dem i skriften. Jesus gave them to us. Jesus har givet dem til os. He gave us these gifts because they're important in the mission. Han har givet os de her gaver, fordi de er vigtige for vores mission. They help us demonstrate God to those who can't believe simply by hearing. De hjælper os med at demonstrere Gud for dem, der ikke kan komme til tro blot ved at høre. So we need to be informed. Så vi er er nødt til at vide besked, and we need to make sure we don't rule ourselves out. Og være sikker på at vi ikke udelukker os selv. We don't say, yeah, those are not for me because I'm too damaged. At vi ikke siger, jamen de gaver er ikke for mig fordi jeg er for skadet. Or we don't say, those are not for me because I'm not that sort of person. Eller vi ikke siger, jamen det er ikke for mig fordi jeg er ikke den slags person. You know, I'm too uh, too intellectual. Jeg er alt for intellektuel. Too rational. Alt for rationel. You know, not experiential. Jeg er ikke en erfaringsperson. Now, what Paul says is that this is for each one. Um, det som Paulus siger, det er det er til hver enkelt vers 7. To each one of us the manifestation of the spirit is given for the common good. Det som ånden åbenbarer får hver enkelt til fællesskab. So each one means all of us. 
Hver enkelt, det betyder os alle sammen. The manifestation of the spirit, that word means something that makes God visible. Det som ånden åbenbarer, det betyder noget som gør Gud synlig. It's given to us. Det får vi. You don't have to earn it. Det er ikke noget vi skal fortjene. It's not for the holy Christians. Det er ikke bare for de hellige kristne. Or for the long-term Christians. Eller for dem der har været kristne længe. Or for the really deep intellectual Christians. Eller for de dybt intellektuelle kristne. It's given to all of us. Det er givet til os alle sammen. And it's given because it's a blessing to all of us. Og det er givet fordi det er en velsignelse. The coming of the Spirit. Helligåndens komme. And the gifts of the Spirit. Og helligåndens gaver are for the common good. Er til fælles gavn. And often all that stands in the way of us using these well. Og um, alt det der står i vejen for at vi kan bruge dem på en god måde is that we feel awkward and embarrassed about ourselves. Det um, det kan kose ned til at uh, vi synes det er akavet og pinligt. So I just want to encourage you this morning. Så so jeg vil opmuntre jer her til morgen to believe that this is for you. Til at tro på at det her er for dig. That when Jesus says everyone he means you. At når Jesus siger en vær så mener han dig. When Paul says to each one he means you. Når Paulus siger hver enkelt så mener han dig. And we just need to get over ourselves. Og vi vi er bare nødt til at sætte os ud over os selv and not allow our, our damaged hearts or our overly rational heads to limit us. Og ikke um, give vores skadede hjerte eller vores overrationelle hoved lov til at stanse os. So really today is all about freedom. Så i dag handler det om frihed. Free to focus on God. Frihed til at fokusere på Gud. Free to step out of the boat and do something impossible. Frihed til at træde ud af båden og gøre noget umuligt. To get beyond feeling awkward and silly. At sætte os ud over at føle os akavet og dumme. And to begin an adventure with Jesus. Og begynde på et eventyr med Jesus. So I'm going to lead us in a prayer. Så jeg vil gerne lede os i bøn. Band are coming back up right Bandet now. kommer op nu. And what we're going to do is we're just going to worship for 10 minutes, then I'll pop back up and teach for a little bit. Og så skal vi lovsynge i 10 minutter, så kommer jeg tilbage og, og underviser lidt igen. And then we'll have a little practice. Og så skal vi øh, øve os lidt. Okay. So would you like to stand, so, if you're able? Så so hvis I vil rejse jer op, hvis I kan. Now remember, all of us have issues with our heads, and all of us have issues with our hearts. Husk, at vi alle sammen har øh, nogle, øh, nogle problemer med både vores hoved og vores hjerte. My issue was particularly with my head. For mig der var det især mit hoved. With my rational mind. Min uh, rationelle forstand. You know, my scientific worldview. Mit videnskabelige verdensbillede. And so if you're like me, then maybe today we'll speak to you. Så so hvis du er ligesom mig, så vil det der sker i dag måske tale til dig. But actually it's for all of us as well. Men det er faktisk for os alle sammen. So I'm just going to pray a prayer where we, we lay down control and surrender ourselves again to God. Så jeg vil bede en bøn, hvor vi uh, giver afkald på kontrollen og overgiver os til Gud igen. Så so let's focus upon him. Så so lad os fokusere på ham. Lord, we want more of you. Herre, vi vil have mere af dig. And please forgive us when we tell you. Tilgiv os når vi siger til dig that there are only certain ways that you can turn up. At um, der kun er nogle bestemte måder du kan dukke op på. Lord, do whatever you want to do. Herre, gør hvad du end vil gøre. We lay down the demands to understand. Vi lægger vores krav om at forstå ned. Lord, we're sorry that we so often demand to be in control. Undskyld, at vi så tit forlanger at have kontrol over hvad der sker. Almost as if we don't trust you. Næsten som om vi ikke stoler på dig. Or we're afraid that you'll embarrass us. Eller vi er bange for at um, du vil gøre os flove. And because you are good and loving. Fordi du er god og kærlig. We want to say, Lord, have your way with us. Så vil vi sige, Herre. Lad din vilje ske med os. Let us not be self-conscious. Lad os ikke være for lejne og opmærksom på os selv. But let us be so focused upon you. Men lad os fokusere på dig. That you receive all that we are and all that we have. Så meget at du modtager alt hvad vi har og alt hvad vi er. We want to love you with our heart, our soul, our mind. Vi vil elske dig med vores hjerte, vores sjæl og vores sind. With all of our strength. Med hele vores styrke. Lord, we surrender everything to you. Herre, vi overgiver alt til dig. Thank you that you give all things freely to us. Tak fordi du giver alting frit til os. So we want to freely give ourselves back to you. Så vi vil frit give os selv tilbage til dig. And as David said, I must become more undignified than this. 
Som David sagde, jeg vil vandere mig selv endnu mere. So Lord, we want to say that everything we do is for you. Så so her vi ønsker at sige at alt hvad vi gør er for dig. And help us to go beyond ourselves. Hjælp os til at sætte os ud over os selv. To bring you the praise that you're deserving. Og give dig den lovprisning du fortjener. To express our love to you. At udtrykke vores kærlighed til dig. Because you are worthy of our praise. For du er værdig i vores lovprisning. Amen. 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 So would you like to sit down? I'm just going to ja, just I, explain a little bit about the next bit. Hvis I vil sætte jer igen, så vil jeg forklare noget mere om det næste, der skal ske. And the first thing I really need to say to you is det første, som jeg har brug for at sige til jer, det er that a lot of us have had problems with the issue of the gift of tongues. Der er mange af os, der har haft problemer med hele tungetalens gave. And sometimes that's because sections of the church say, unless you speak in tongues, you're not a really a Christian. Og, og det er blandt andet fordi der er nogle dele af kirken der siger med mindre du taler i tunger så er du ikke øh, en rigtig kristen. Or if you have been baptized in the spirit you will speak in tongues. Eller hvis du er blevet døbt med Helligånden så vil du også tale i tunger. And somehow people who speak in tongues are better than people who don't speak in tongues. Og folk der taler i tunger på en eller anden måde er bedre end folk der ikke gør. But the truth is when we get to heaven. Men sandheden er når vi kommer i himlen there will be people in the front row. Så vil der være folk på forreste række. You never even thought that they could speak in tongues. Som aldrig nogensinde har tænkt på at de kunne tale i tunger. You know, it's not that important. Så vigtigt er det ikke. So let, let's not make it a problem. Så lad os ikke gøre det til et problem. It isn't a sign of whether God loves us or not. Det er ikke et tegn på om Gud elsker os eller ej. Now I believe that all of us can actually speak in tongues. Jeg tror på at vi alle sammen kan tale i tunger. But I want you to hear this. Men jeg, jeg ønsker at I skal høre det her. I believe all of us can. Jeg tror på at vi alle sammen kan, but no one has to. Men ingen behøver. And I believe that because um, that's how I understand 1 Corinthians. Og det tror jeg fordi det er sådan jeg forstår første Korintherbrev. Now sometimes people say, aha, but there is a verse in Corinthians that says not everybody does speak in tongues. Nogle gange så siger folk, jamen der er jo et vers i første Korintherbrev hvor der står Um, er det ikke alle taler i tunger? It comes from the end of chapter 12. Det er slutningen af kapitel 12, vers 30. It says, are all apostles? Uh, vers 29. Kan alle være apostle? No, obviously not. Nej. Are all prophets? Are all teachers? Do all yeah. work miracles? Er alle profeter eller lærer? Uh, kan alle gøre mægtige gerninger? Do all have gifts of healing? Har alle noget gaver til at helbrede? Do all speak in tongues? The, the Danish it says can all can all speak in tongues. Okay, I'll go with the Danish. <laughs> it's a rhetorical question, isn't it? Uh, det er et retorisk spørgsmål, ikke sandt? Can everybody speak in tongues? Kan alle tale i tunger? The answer is no. Svaret er nej. But I don't think that's quite what he's saying. Men, men, men jeg tror ikke, at det er det han siger. Because I believe that all people can prophesy. For jeg tror, at alle kan. Jesus said, "All my sheep hear my voice." Jesus siger, "Alle mine får hører min røst." Moses says, "I wish that all God's people would prophesy." Moses siger, "Jeg vil ønske at hele Guds folk var profeter." The prophet said, "When the Spirit comes." Profeterne siger, "Når ånden kommer." The Spirit of God is poured out on all flesh. Så vil Guds ånd blive udgydt over alt kød. What will you see? Hvad vil du se? Hvad vil I så se? My sons and daughters will prophesy. Ja, sønner og døtre vil profetere. We've been talking already about how Jesus sends all of his disciples to work miracles. Vi har allerede talt om hvordan Jesus sender alle sine disciple ud for at gøre mirakler. How we are all sent to heal. Hvordan vi alle sammen er sendt ud for at helbrede. So I think here he's not saying that you can't all speak in tongues. Så jeg tror ikke at det han siger er at at I ikke alle sammen har mulighed for at tale i tunger. What he's saying is that not everybody uses that gift in a public meeting. Men snarere at det ikke er alle der bruger den gave i et offentligt møde. But there's lots of things in the Bible that says the Holy Spirit prays through us. Men der er mange steder i Bibelen hvor der står at Helligånden beder igennem os. It says the Spirit of God in us cries out Abba Father. Der står at at Ånden i os råber Abba Far. It says the Holy Spirit intercedes for us with moans and groans that are too deep for human understanding. Der står at Ånden går i forbøn for os med uudsigelige sukke. And if that's what the Spirit is doing, I think sometimes he can come out through our mouth. Og hvis det er det ånden gør, så tror jeg også, at han nogle gange kan komme ud gennem vores mund. 
But the experience of receiving the gift of tongues is very different for lots of people. Men erfaringen af at modtage tungetalens gave er meget forskellig for mange mennesker. For some people it is this powerful moment when they find themselves doing something. For nogle der er det det her kraftfulde øjeblik hvor de hvor de opdager at de gør noget. And it just comes out fluently. Og det kommer flydende ud. And I've seen that happen to people. Det har jeg set ske for mennesker. But I've seen more people like me. Men jeg har set flere der har oplevet det som jeg selv har. Who start off in a stumbling kind of way. Som begynder sådan uh, snublende. I was just talking to one of your leaders yesterday. Jeg talte med en af jeres ledere i går. And he said 20 years ago he was prayed for for the gift of tongues. Og han uh, fortalte at for 20 år siden der blev han bedt for om uh, helligånd eller om tungetalen. He just made a few sounds. Og han uh, lavede bare nogle få lyde. But it was only two or three years ago. Men uh, først for to tre år siden. That he felt the freedom. Følte han frihed that he didn't feel self-conscious. Der følte der følte han sig ikke for lejen. He learned to trust and to let that language develop and flow. Han lærte at have tillid og at lade det sprog udvikle sig og flyde. It was actually at, here at Summer Oasis. Det var faktisk her på Summer Oasis. No, I think it's like this. Jeg tror det er, er sådan her. Imagine you buy a new house. Forestil dig du køber et nyt hus. And you go to the garden. Og du går ud i haven. And in the garden it's very overgrown. Og um, haven er helt tilgroet. And as you're clearing away the weeds, og mens du renser ukrudtet væk, you find that you have a water tap in your garden. Så opdager du at du har en vandpost i haven. Now, you could turn the tap on and water will flow out. Du kunne øhm, åbne for vandposten og øh, så vil der komme vand ud. And for some people receiving the gift of tongues is like that. Og for nogle mennesker er det sådan når de modtager. But often if you find a tap in the garden. Men tit er det sådan hvis du finder en vandpost i haven. When you turn it on what you hear is a hissing. Så når du øhm, når du åbner for den så øh, så hører du bare sådan en væsen. And then a spitting. Og så øhm, og så sprutter den. And then a trickle. Øh, og, og så øh, og så drøber det. And then finally a flow. Og endelig flyder vandet. And for many of us that's what it is like to start speaking in tongues. Og for mange af os er det sådan det er at begynde at tale i tunge. So Paul says this is not a very important gift. Paulus siger det er ikke en uh, specielt vigtig gave. Because it's really a personal gift. Det er en personlig gave. Unless you're one of those people that he talks about in chapter 12. Men mindre du er en af de mennesker han taler om i kapitel 12. Who God may inspire to give a, a tongue in a meeting that needs to be interpreted. Som Gud inspirerer til at give en tungetale i et møde som skal tolkes. Then it's a personal gift. Men mindre det tilfælde så er det en personlig gave. So in 1 Corinthians chapter 14, i 1. Korintherbrev kapitel 14, he's encouraged them particularly to focus on prophecy. Der opmuntrer han dem til at fokusere på profeti. And we're going to talk about that tomorrow. Det skal vi tale om i morgen. He says in verse 2 for anyone who speaks in a tongue doesn't speak to people but to God. I vers 2 siger han for den der taler i tunger taler ikke til mennesker men til Gud. Indeed nobody understands them they are uttering mysteries by the spirit. Ingen forstår ham jo det han taler ved ånden er hemmeligheder. So this is what he's saying about tongues. Så det er det han siger om tungetale. It is directed to God. Det er rettet mod Gud. It is a language therefore of prayer and praise. Det er et uh, bønds og lovprisningsprog. It's not understandable as a human language. Det er ikke forståeligt som et menneskeligt sprog. But it is meaningful. Men det, uh, er, men det har betydning. It's not, we say in English, gibberish. It, it, it's not a language with no meaning. Det er, det er ikke bare uh, volapyk. It is meaningful. Det har betydning. But these are mysteries of the Spirit. Men det er hemmeligheder ved ånd. And then he goes on and he says, prophecy is the other way. You speak to people. Og så siger han, det er omvendt med profeti, den der taler profetisk taler til mennesker. But in verse 4 he says, anyone who speaks in a tongue edifies themselves. Men i, i, i vers 4 så siger han, den der taler i tunger opbygger sig selv. In other words, speaking in a tongue is a way of building yourself up. Med andre ord, det at tale i tunger, det er en måde at opbygge dig selv på åndeligt. But in church, Men, we should be focused on serving others. Men i kirken skal vi fokusere på at tjene andre. Down in verse 14. Nede i vers 14. He says, if I pray in a tongue, my spirit prays, but my mind is unfruitful. Der står der, for hvis jeg taler i tunger under min bøn, er det ganske vist min ånd, der beder, men min forstand er uden frugt. So in other words, when I pray in a tongue, I don't understand what it is that I'm saying. Så so, so når jeg beder i tunger, så forstår jeg ikke selv, hvad det er, jeg siger. And actually, my mind is sort of on pause. Og øh, min forstand er sat på pause. I'm not thinking about what syllable to say next. Jeg tænker ikke over hvilken stavelse jeg skal sige som den næste. So what what shall I do? Så so hvad skal jeg gøre? Well, he says I will pray with my spirit. 
Paulus but, siger i vers 15, jeg vil bede med ånden. But I will also pray with my understanding. Men jeg vil også bede med forstanden. In other words, sometimes it's good to pray and to understand what it is that you're saying to God. Men der var nogle gange så er det godt at, at bede og forstå hvad det er du siger til Gud. But maybe there are sometimes when we need to pray and we don't really understand. Men nogle gange har vi måske brug for at bede uden at vi forstår hvad vi siger. He says you can also do this with singing. Han siger det kan man også med ånd med med sang. He says I will sing with my spirit. Jeg vil lovsynge med ånden. But I will also sing with my understanding. Men jeg vil også lovsynge med forstand. Mostly in church, when we sing, we sing words that are meaningful to us, and we understand what we're saying to God. For the most, when we sing in church, we sing words that have meaning for us, and we understand what we sing. But maybe there are times when we want to praise God, and we just don't have the language. But no, maybe there are some times when we want to praise God, but we just don't have the language. And we, words. And we could just be quiet and contemplate him. So can we uh, bare være tause og kontemplerende? Or maybe we could partner with God. Eller måske kan vi samarbejde med Gud. Begin to make sounds. Begynde at lave lyde. Let the Holy Spirit make them meaningful. Og lad Helligånden give dem. And just betyden. trust in faith that somehow the Spirit is bringing mysteries. Og bare stole på i tro at Ånden på en eller anden måde taler hemmeligheder. We're bringing something that's meaningful and worthy to God. Som uh, er, øh, som har betydning og er værdig over for Gud. You know, and perhaps we'll never know. Måske finder vi aldrig ud af det. But God's calling us to have faith. Men Gud kalder os til at have tro. Maybe like he did for me, he, he might confirm it to you in other ways. Måske vil han bekræfte det for dig, ligesom han gjorde for mig. You'll recognize that your relationship with God is growing. Og så vil du opdage, at det dit forhold til Gud you're vokser. feeling built up. Og du føler dig opbygget. That you're discovering freedom at du opdager frihed that things are being broken off your life at der er noget der bliver brækket af dit liv so although tongues is a small gift så so selvom tungetale er en lille gave paul says i thank god i speak in tongues more than any så so siger paulus jeg takker gud for at jeg taler mere i tunger end nogen af jer so unless we're talking about somebody who interrupts a meeting to bring a tongue så so mindre vi uh, taler om en der afbryder et møde for at komme med en tungetale i think it's okay for us to use tongues together så tror jeg, at det er i orden, at vi bruger tungetale sammen. Anybody can, nobody has to. Alle kan, ingen behøver. So what we're going to do is we're going to ask the band to come up. Så so nu vil vi bede bandet om at komme op. And we're just going to practice some singing. Og så vil vi øve os i noget sang. Now, this is the most frightening thing you have ever seen in my hands. Det her, det er det mest skræmmende, I nogensinde har set i min hånd. Because I'm joining the band. For nu skal jeg være med i bandet. So just so I can help lead you. Bare for jeg kan hjælpe med at lede jer. And what we're going to do is we've, got, we've chosen a song that we think most of you will know. Vi har valgt en sang som uh, som vi And regner med at de fleste af jer kender. We're going to sing it in English because I'm English. Vi på engelsk fordi jeg er englænder. And although I've been trying really hard, my Danish is not that good. Og selvom jeg har forsøgt, så er mit danske ikke så godt endnu. But we're also going to leave some spaces where we're going to try and be free to sing our own words to God. Men vi vil også um, have nogle, uh, nogle åbninger, hvor vi kan synge vores egne ord til Gud. And you can do that in English or in Danish. Det kan du gøre på engelsk eller på dansk. And then as we get used to being in the flow of, of being free worshiping God. Og efterhånden som vi vender os til at være i det her flow og være fri til at tilbe Gud. I'm just going to encourage you to try to open your mouth and sing with words that you haven't learned. Så vil jeg opmuntre dig til at prøve at, at åbne munden og synge med ord, som du ikke har lært. And it's not going to work unless you make some sounds. Og det kommer ikke til at virke med mindre du laver nogle lyde. That's your part. Det er din del. If you're waiting there like this, hvis du står og venter sådan her, for God to hit you on the back of the head, for at Gud skal slå dig i baghovedet, so that all these words will come out, så når alle ordene kommer ud, probably not going to happen. Så kommer det nok ikke til at ske. Then we just need to just kick our brains to one side, så vi skal sparke vores hjerne til side, and start to make sound, og begynde at lave lyde. Now, would you like to stand if you're able? So, if you rise here up, if you can. Now, before we actually start this, I'm going to do one more thing. Før vi begynder, så er der en ting mere, jeg vil gøre. If you're someone that maybe has prayed for this gift and you're not confident that you've received it, hvis du er en der har bedt om at få den her gave og du ikke er sikker på at du har fået den, I'd like you to come and, and just stand at the front. Så vil jeg bede dig om at komme og stå her op foran. And don't worry, I'm not going to put a microphone in your face. Rolig, jeg, okay. jeg stikker ikke mikrofonen ned i ansigtet på dig. What I want is I want there to be a wave of praise coming over you. Jeg vil bare gerne have at um, 
Der bliver en bølge af lovprisning der skal those of us on, from those of us on the platform fra, fra os på scenen and from those of us behind you og fra dem bag dig and maybe some of the ministry team might just come around and encourage you a little bit as well og måske er der nogen fra forbundsteamet der der kommer rundt og opmuntrer dig lidt so if you think you know i, I really would like to give it a go why don't you come stand at the front now come quickly tænker, jeg vil virkelig gerne give det en chance så um, så kom herop foran nu skynd dig at komme Nobody's going to embarrass you. You don't have to do it, but there ain't no one that um, that will go to pee. Push, push, push right up to the front. Come on, come leave uh, some space for other people. Come here, from here, uh, from here, from so that there's place for others later. We're all going to be singing at the same time, so nobody's going to hear you. We come all together to sing samtidig, so there's no one that comes to hear you. Now I'm going to move to this microphone now. Thank you. So my encouragement for everybody is if you're someone that does already speak in tongues. So min min opmuntring til dig er hvis du er en der allerede taler i tunger, be really loud. Så gør det rigtig højt. There, there is nothing magic about loud. Der er ikke noget magisk ved at uh, at tale højt, but it's encouraging. Men det er opmuntrende. It's permission giving. Det er um, det er noget som And som breaks open the way for other people. Som, som åbner vejen for andre og gør at de, at de føler sig frimodige. So we're going to start to sing. We're going to start before we start praying for people. Ministry team, hands off. Så so, før vi begynder at bede for folk, øh, forbøn hænderne væk. Let's just let's just sing this in English first. Så so, lad os synge det her på engelsk. Let's get into praise and worship to God again. Og så bevæger vi os ind i uh, i lovsang sammen. Vi gør det igen, og når vi kommer til omkvædet, så vil vi prise Gud med vores egne ord. I will worship you with all of my heart. I will worship you. And you can make up your own words at that point. Og du kan, du kan lave dine egne ord. And just, just sing anything. But sing out some praise to God. It's easy if you know that it has a, a certain number of beats. By sing in praise to God. It's easy if you know that there are a certain number of beats. Jesus, you are Lord. Holy Spirit, come. Fall on your church. Just anything like that. By small settings or some so pass the number of beats. Helion, come now. Jesus, you are God, and so on. Let's start with the verse and then we'll sing the chorus. So we sing a little bit of verse and so we're on the day after what we sing about our song. More love. More love. More power. More of you in my life.
worship. I will worship you. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Sing again together in English. I will worship you. We will worship you with all of our hearts. I will hearts. worship you with all of my heart. And I, I will, will worship you with all of my mind. I will worship you with all of my strength. For you are my Okay, we're now going to sing the verse again. And when we get to the end, we're going to use that last note as the note to sing on. And I just want to encourage you to open your mouths and to pray, and just to praise out whatever comes. Og jeg vil bare opmuntre jer til at åbne munden og, og bare lovsynge med hvad der kommer. Start to sing out syllables to God. Begynd at synge stavelser til Gud. And it doesn't matter if you sing la 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 la. Om det så bare er la 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 la. But gradually if your mind is pushed to one side. Men efter hånden hvis du skubber forstanden til side. I pray that the spirit of God will release the gift of tongues to you. Så vil jeg bede om at Guds ånd vil frigive tungtalens nådegave til jer. So we're going to end the verse the chorus by saying for you are my god. Så so, um, omkvæd slutter med for you are my god. That's your note. Oh, det er så den toniske <tryk> symboler, <tryk> but that 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 And if you're confident, start going up and down. Og øh, hvis I har frimodighed til det, så kan I også lade tonen bevæge sig op og ned. We'll just see what God does. So Lord, we pray that you would release us in tongues of men and angels. Gud, vi beder om, at du vil frigive tungens hælde noget gav. Spirit of God, set us free to worship you. Helligånd, sæt os fri til at tilbe.
But before Becky and I came to Dan uh, Denmark, we had heard a rumor that the Danes were reserved. Don't think that's true. Jeg tror ikke, det er sandt. So well done. Now we, we're going to give it another go. Vi vil prøve igen. And some of you, you're just starting. Og nogle af jer er lige ved at komme i gang. And some of you are still waiting for something to happen. Nogle af jer stadig på, at der skal ske noget. So again, my encouragement is just start to make some sounds. Så so, min, min opmuntring til jer, det er uh, bare at, at begynde at lave nogle lyde. And try to forget yourself. Prøv at glemme dig selv. Stop thinking about what you're singing. Hold op med at tænke over, hvad du synger. And just try and let it happen. Forsøg bare at lade det ske. Sometimes we say, if it helps, pretend that you're worshiping God in a language you don't have. Nogle gange så, så siger jeg, hvis det, hvis det hjælper dig, så lad som om du synger til Gud på øh, et sprog, du ikke kender. So if you don't speak, if you don't speak Swahili, hvis du ikke taler Swahili, what would it, what would it feel like if you tried to praise God in Swahili? Hvad vil det, hvordan vil det føles, hvis du forsøgte at synge på Swahili? Maybe it's a little mental trick just to start making some sound. Øh, det, det kan måske hjælpe dig i gang. But let's go back. Let's sing the verse and then the chorus. One verse, one chorus. We'll hear the time. Synger vi verset igen og så omkvædet en gang og så øh, synger vi vores egen ord. Let's just be still. Let's be still.
tongues has an amazing way of bringing us into the presence of God. Tungtal har en uh, fantastisk måde at bringe os ind i Guds nærvær på. So just listen for what God has to say to you in this moment. Så bare lyt til hvad Gud har at sige til dig i dette øjeblik. Some people he is just speaking words of love. Jeg tror til til nogen af der taler han bare ord af kærlighed. Of reassurance. Af bekræftelse. You are my beloved daughter. Du er min elskede datter. I'm well pleased in you. I dig har jeg velbehag. I'm just proud of who you are. Jeg er stolt af den du er. I rejoice over you with singing. Jeg glæder mig over at du synger. You're the apple of my eye. Du er min øjesten. You are my great treasure. Du er min skat. You never have to prove yourself to me. Du behøver ikke at bevise noget over for mig. I receive your praise. I pray Lord that you would continue to help us bring you praise. Herre, jeg beder om at du vil blive ved med at hjælpe os til at give dig lovprisning. We want more of you in our lives. Vi vil have mere af dig i vores liv. We want to learn how to surrender control. Vi ønsker at lære hvordan vi overgiver vores kontrol. How to step into things that we don't understand. Hvordan vi træder ud i ting som vi ikke forstår. Fix our eyes upon Jesus. Vi retter vores øjne mod Jesus. And we know that we are loved. Og vi ved at vi er elsket. Thank you Lord. Tak herre.